guys, it's Jonathan Bocher. Welcome to PlayGuitar.com. Today, we're going to discover the key to unlocking every note name on your fretboard. I've bumped into a lot of guitar players over the years that just kind of figure it's not really necessary to learn the names of the notes on their guitar. But let me just give you a couple examples, okay? If you want to learn bar chords, then the bar chords all work off of a root note, right? The root note tells you what the chord is. So for instance, if I play, you know, um, that, that's a B major chord because my root note is here, it's a B, and I happen to know that that's a B, right? Um, you can get into playing triads, um, you know, playing in, in more advanced areas of soloing, like you'll be playing notes that are related to the chords that are being played in the chord progression and you need to know what notes are going to work and which ones aren't and <clears throat> taking a purely patterns based approach can get you a certain ways but let me just tell you this if <laughs> it's like a pilot an airplane pilot choosing not to learn what the instruments in his pilot in his cockpit do um, if you're a guitar player you just got to learn what the notes are and i got good news for you it's not that hard we're going to look at that right now. So the key to everything is understanding the musical alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We got seven letters and that's it. We got seven letters. We don't go into H or you know any of the other ones. As soon as you get to the to the last one you start over again at A. Um, but there's these things called accidentals. Okay? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, those, those are what we call natural notes. Okay? But then we have accidentals which fit in between like in between A and B, for instance, is A sharp. You've probably heard the terms sharp and flat before, right? Well, on the guitar, there's an A and there's a B. It's like we've taken a whole step up, right? In fact, that is. It's called a whole step or a whole tone. Um, I just call it a tone. But if we take a half step, you can hear it's it's more dissonant, right? It sounds like, hey, wait a second, we haven't gone all the way up to that next step. And in fact, that's what it is. It's a semitone. Semi means half, or we could call it a half step or a half tone. Those are all interchangeable terminology, okay? Um, so on the path from A to B, we've got that A sharp accidental right in the middle. And it's important to know that A sharp is exactly the same pitch as B flat, okay? So the way that you determine what it's called, whether it's going to be called A sharp or B flat, that has to do with the key that you're in and things like that. And we're not going to get into that discussion today. Um, but for now, it's important to know that A sharp is the same musical pitch as B flat, okay? So all of the letter names that I mentioned, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, they've all got these accidentals in between them with the exception of the space between B and C and the space between E and F, okay? The space from B to C and E to F is what we call a natural semitone. All the other natural steps are, are full tones, whole tones, right? But in the case of B to C and E to F, the natural step is actually a semitone. So, with just what I've told you, we can figure out all the notes on the fretboard. I'm in standard tuning today, but this applies to every kind of tuning that you want. Um, it just so happens that standard tuning, of course, is the most common, and it's the one that you really need to work on learning your, your notes first. Um, so standard tuning is E, A, D, G, B, E. Okay? So that means our sixth string, the lowest string here, is an E. Well, what did I say about the distance between E to F? If we want to go up one step, what is that step? It's a natural semitone because it's E to F. So on the fretboard, all these metal strips here, if you're not aware, are called frets. Every time we move one fret, we're moving up one semitone or down one semitone depending on the direction you're going, right? That's down a semitone. 
So here we're going from our open position, our open E, and we're going up one fret or one semitone. That brings us to F. We could go up again and we get F sharp. Up again to the third fret now and we get G. We could go up again, G sharp. Now we're at the fifth fret, that's an A. Now we get to the A sharp or the B flat that we talked about previously. Seventh fret is a B. Eighth fret is A, sorry, <laughs> C. Let's try that one instead. Um, remember B to C is one of those natural semitones, right? So next one is C sharp. 10th fret is D. 11th fret is D sharp or E flat, it's the same difference. And then we get something special here at the 12th fret, we get E again. And you'll notice we got up to D sharp. So over here, we got G, G sharp, and we go to A, right? That's when the whole musical alphabet repeats. But in the context of this string, we've started at E, and then we get up to D sharp, and then it goes to E again, right? Just the whole thing just cycles. And uh, that applies to all the different strings on your fretboard. You'll notice when we get to that higher note, it's called the octave. The octave is actually double the frequency if you want to get all scientific about it. And like the way that digital tuners work is they measure the, the vibrations per second, the frequency of the string, right? And the, the frequency is exactly double when you go up one octave. Every time you go up another octave, the frequency doubles, doubles, doubles again, right? Um, so that's just some side science for you. But that, that works every time on all of these different strings. When we get to the 12th fret, it repeats. And that's because we've only got 12 steps in the entire chromatic scale. Now the chromatic scale includes all of the notes, okay? Every single possible note that that exists is in the chromatic scale. So it's not really in any key. When we get into talking about keys, which we can do on a different day, we actually take notes, remove notes from the chromatic scale, and we end up with a smaller amount. And then we create a, a family of notes, and that's a, a key. Um, you can think of chromatic being like all the people on Earth, and then you, you, know, you got different families or, or countries or whatever, like it's a smaller subset, right? And it's got its own character. Um, so let's just really quickly go through the fifth string here and show you how that applies there. So if we start on A, now we got to go up one semitone, we get A sharp or B flat. One more fret and we get B. Sometimes you call those B natural, right? But usually we just shorten that to B. We got C, C sharp, fifth fret is D, D sharp or E flat, seventh fret is E, we get F, we get F sharp or G flat, tenth fret is G, eleventh fret is G sharp, and there we are back at A again, you see it works. So what we've learned with the tones and the semitones, the whole steps and half steps, whole tones, half tones, whatever terminology you want to use, and applying that to the fretboard, and every fret being one semitone, um, that's the foundation for like everything else. If you want to learn how music theory applies to your guitar, if you want to learn how chords apply to your guitar, how scales apply to your guitar, if you want to solo and key, and every, all this, everything you're going to do, it really hinges on understanding the fretboard. So I've got a little exercise for you to help you do that. I've got a worksheet here which you can download underneath the video. and. Uh, assuming you're on playguitar.com and watching the video. And all it is is three different fretboards shown in standard tuning with E, A, D, G, B, E at the top. And back when I was first starting to learn the fretboard, many, many moons ago, um, my teacher encouraged me to do exactly this exercise. And so I did that one time. My family was driving to, to Vancouver about an hour away. and. I filled out fretboards all the way there and all the way back, I believe. And you know what? That hour that I invested in filling out fretboards, 
I'm still benefiting from that today. And it's like 20 plus years later, right? So if you'll invest an hour or a half hour or whatever time you've got into doing this exercise a few times, I promise you, you're going to notice a result and you're going to see, start seeing the benefit of that in your playing because, you know, rather than just shooting in the dark, you're going to know and understand where things are and why, even if it's not intuitive, like, you know, 10th fret, fifth string is a G, right? I know that. But even if you don't have that memorized right away, you're going to have the tools where you can figure it out at least very quickly. And as you begin doing that, it's going to get faster and faster. So all you got to do is start filling this out. Um, you can do it in, in order from the top to the bottom. You can do it from the bottom to the top. You can start in the middle. You can work your way out. It doesn't matter. Just challenge yourself. Okay. Once you start, probably start from the top and work down, but then just pick a starting point like eight, the fifth fret on the sixth string and start going from there and see if you can start noticing some of the patterns that are happening on the fretboard. Okay. So hopefully that was helpful for you. This is the key to everything else, unlocking your fretboard down the line as we get into talking about scales and stuff like that. Work on this and we'll see you again in the next lesson.